Hey folks, Quill18 here, and I just recorded a whole video without recording, so I'm going to try this again, and hopefully not forget to say anything. Um, yeah, I want to give a quick update on Project Porcupine, on my end of it, on the programming. Uh, since making the move from Unity 3D into Java using JMonkey Engine, um, it's a pretty big change. We're, we're a lot of things that Unity 3D is giving us for free, we're sort of having to redo from scratch, but it does mean we have a little bit more control over things and we can build an engine that's a little bit more ideal for the sort of thing we're doing. Hopefully it'll scale a little bit better for the sort of stuff we're doing just because of the control we'll have. Um, it hasn't turned out to be quite as hard as I imagined, um, and mostly I'm working on getting things back to the way they kind of were uh, in Unity. So I can give a quick little demo here just by launching it. Um, and so a lot of this look will look kind of similar. Um, it's very it's fairly dark. I should actually turn up the lights in the game a little bit more, but anyway, none of that matters. It can so be adjusted later on. So we have very similar movement to the way it was working before uh, with the keyboard ASW or WASD or the arrow keys. We can use that to navigate around. Um, presumably, we could maybe add some stuff on NumLock as well if people want. Either it doesn't really matter. It's all very easy to do. Um, it doesn't have the sort of time control thing that I was I was going with for a while. I can't show you the cool little clock demo in the, in the top left corner or anything like that. Uh, that's to come. Um, I do have vision in there. You can't see it in here, um, but when I come around here, the uh, the player and the monster can will now see each other. Um, there's a there's a function in my code. It actually runs every frame right now, um, sort of as a test to make sure that it's it's not horribly slow. Um, but the the Every, I call it, creature in the game has a, has a certain vision radius around it. And basically, whenever, right now, again, every frame for each creature, it's calling and saying, okay, find me everything inside this radius, which you can use find during radius, then loop through it all, find everything that matches a creature control, so another creature, and then from there, do a physics line of sight test to see if we can actually see it. So if I was around here, this that function would return nothing. If I'm around here, it would return the little alien enemy thing, and I'll talk about the cursor in a sec, um, and, and vice versa. Then the alien can see the player, um, and if there's multiple things, like it can return the list of all of them, just the closest, whatever it wants. And so the fact that it's running every frame at... Um, I was going to say 100 frames per second. Normally it's 100 frames per second, but I think while I'm recording it's slowing down. I've actually got it capped at 100. Uh, otherwise, on my PC it'll hit like 1,000 FPS, and I'll just hear my uh, my video card just start to spin up. Um, so I got it capped just to give my video card a break, and also because the physics get kind of wonky at like super tiny little movements, um, which we could adjust, but there's no point. So I'll just cap it at 100 for now. That can be user... Uh, user controllable or whatever, we'll figure something out, it doesn't matter, but it means performance is pretty good, uh, especially considering that my code is pretty unoptimized. Um, it might not seem very complex, but there's a lot going on. The, the map area here is very, very large, um, and it's all made up of cubes, the walls, like you can see here, they're cubes, that gives us options for digging through them and whatever. Um, now, cube, of course, is six-sided, so it's only got like 12 polygons total. Um, and but with the uh, that's not really the the, the question. The, the whole map, all the walls put together. Uh, it's right now I'm working on a 40 by 20 map, so it's like 800 blocks. Uh, so I just did the math a second ago. 9600 um, triangles to do all like the, the map basically, uh, or at least all the wall cubes, which is not very much, except that each object being sent to the video card is quite a bit. It is being called, of course. Um, by the viewport, but still. Anyway, I, I take it all as a pretty good sign that we're not going on a horrendous, horrendous uh, direction. Uh, I have a, a MacBook Air, very, very lightweight, very minimal laptop. Um, it uh, it doesn't run quite as fast as this, but it can still keep up pretty well too, so I take that all as a pretty good sign. Um, so yeah, so they can see each other. Um, I don't have the time in there, and there's not actually anything you can do, but you know, you can hit the walls and not go through, which is a which is a big deal. You know, people might not realize that, but that's not the easiest thing. And I do have a 3D cursor so it knows where in the 3D world exactly your mouse pointing. Uh, because some people might want to use like a click to move thing, which I mean we can just put in for free and people get to choose whether they want to use the keyboard or they'll click to move somewhere, which I would like to do if I'm traveling like more like longer distances. You know, I'm here and I want to get to the other side, I'll just click there because I'm being lazy. Uh, of course you could maybe do it on the minimap too. I don't know. Uh, we could maybe give the option the player the option to zoom out more. Um, then it would be even better for fast traveling, something like that. 
Um, and of course, for shooting, like I thought, we could play the game. The game should be playable entirely via the keyboard to be properly roguelike. So you could do something like hit the fire key, whatever that is, and then use tab to cycle between visible monsters to choose who to who to shoot at. I mean, if you're meleeing, you can just bump into people, and that'd be enough. Um, but yeah, hit the fire key, tab through people, or do some other control on the keyboard to choose who to shoot at, and then hit enter or something like that to actually fire. Alternatively, you could hit the fire key and then point at the thing you want to shoot and just click it. Um, and that might give us a, a little bit more control when you're trying to shoot around the corner and you're just trying to get the edge of the creature or something like that. Of course, to make it even, instead of just you know being able to just click on the edge to select, uh, you might want to have it so when you mouse over a creature, it just auto locks to the center. That way it would be equivalent to using the keyboard, unless you know there's some way to fine tune your aim. I don't know, none of these things really matter. Um, a while ago on the message board, I had asked people to send me some spaceships and things so that I could get, start working on the space stuff. That was when we were still in Unity, so um, with, with the move I hadn't had a chance to work with the space stuff. And to be honest, like we are making a roguelike with possibly like a space-based kind of overworld macro level type stuff. Um, but the game is is a roguelike. So I know that spaceships are pretty easy to make and I think a lot of people are just practicing in Blender that way. Uh, but ultimately I'm gonna mostly focus on this aspect early on, just get it going. Uh, I want to get the map to randomly generate again, which won't take very long. Um, all the, like the really hard stuff is the stuff I've already done. Map generation is pretty trivial. So I'm gonna get some sort of like simple generation again, just to make it um, interesting and you know, not just two rooms. And then I'm gonna work on actually like having interaction with the uh, with the enemies, and one I want to figure out exactly what I want to do in terms of not walking through them, just because um, the character physics don't work the same way. It's it's not that hard to make it so that I can't walk through the wall, for example. Um, but because your player and the monster are both character, they're called character controls or whatever. Um, they don't they don't interact with each other physically, so there's going to be some have to be some other sort of manual logic to do it. I just got to decide what what my preferred way of doing that will be. Um, I'll put in some implementation, then we can see how that works, and people can talk back and forth about what it is. I don't know, maybe some people want us to be able to walk through things. I mean, all MMOs and stuff like that, you can walk right through other players and other enemies. Um, but I don't think it really fits as well in the roguelike. I mean, enemies do tend to physically block you. And of course, the fact that like bumping into an enemy tends to be the way to initiate melee. Um, so there's something there as well. Uh, yeah, so I want to be able to interact with them and also shoot, like put in some sort of button or, or something like that and let me target and shoot. Uh, the uh, You can take damage in, in the game. You do, there's health that's all put into place. When you get to zero, the thing dies. Um, just disappears from the game world, but you know that 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 mechanic is at least in there. Um, yeah, and I do like my little zoomy thing. I don't think I talked about it in in, in this version of the video. Um, can't remember what else I might have not talked about. I don't recall. Uh, I didn't put shadows in. I really should have just to make it look a little nicer for this. Um, shadows, like actual real shadows, should be entirely doable. Hopefully, it's not too hard on the CPU, but of course, we can you know give people an option to turn it on and off. Um, so that's good, um, and it would just make things look a little less floaty. Of course, you can you can fake you can use fake shadows that are very easy, like just a little bit of a shadow blob behind uh, below someone, and then all of a sudden it you know looks like you're on solid ground, and it's very cheap to do just a simple little you know splotch of uh, fuzzy grayness. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah, that's it. So the code is uh, it's coming along pretty well. Here's the uh, I mean the Java uh, got different classes. Not much to say. I did update the post on Tower Dive with how you can download this code if you want, how you can submit stuff. Um, there's still, um, I mean, a lot of it is pretty rough. A lot of it is just put in something that works, and then I'll refactor later and, and refactor and refactor and refactor. It used to be I just had one main function, and basically everything was happening in main. And now I've moved the logic out, and then out some more, and then out some more, and then subclassing and, and all that sort of stuff. So like right now, um, ground app state, that's the sort of the state, state app states or something in JMonkey Engine. So the ground app state is the state of the game when you're on sort of ground mode, the roguelike mode, um, and it calls a ground map, but ground map is actually abstract. So in this case, what we're actually doing is a dungeon map, um, or rather, yeah, so it goes, dungeon map is a tile map, um, which is a ground map. So a ground map is just generically has some stuff in it, and you know, has a ground-like gameplay. A tile map uses a map generator that actually just like creates a 
standard roguelike tile-like map. Now, we are going to move around in an untile-like fashion, but the map generation is going to be tile-like. It's abstract, too. You can't just make a tile map, but it's, it's you know, it knows how to sort of, you know, what a tile is, and then it converts the tiles into actual map objects afterwards. So the tile structure can just be a simple sort of array in memory, very easy to save, very minimal actual memory requirements, and then you dump it into 3D objects later on. And again, this, this sort of algorithm or, or function to convert it from the tiles into map objects, again, very, very naive, just very, very plain up front right now, and then we'll refactor it later. Anyway, and then, uh, and then finally you get into dungeon map, which is a specific instance of tile map, where it makes something dungeon-like, which is going to be rooms and corridors. Um, but I'm going to make another one soon, like cavern map, which is still going to be a tile map, but it's going to look a lot more like natural stone formations. And then another tile map might be like building interior map, right, which would also be serviced very well by a tile map. And then some will just be like, just more organic. Instead of a tile map, it'll just be some, you know, like the surface type map might not be tiled at all. Or it might be, we might want that sort of feel, right? It works in Minecraft. Anyway, I think I pretty much talked about all the stuff I wanted to talk about. So, anyway, there you have it. There's the game. And, uh, We'll keep at it. Keep posting awesome ideas in the forums. We're a long way away from implementing a lot of it, but the uh, the earlier we talk about some of it, the better it will be because we'll get to flesh out some really cool ideas. And, and some of the systems will be built with uh, uh, with some of that future stuff in mind. So again, if we get the ideas earlier on, then it means we can uh, prepare and future-proof and all that. And I just realized that that whole video at the wrong resolution. I should have been doing it here, uh, except you know, straight. Oh, I did such a better job the first time. Anyway, that's it. I'll see you next time, folks. Bye-bye.